October 29th there, uh, right around Hurricane Sandy, we had a uh, power outage up at the lake. So we had an alarm. I had to go over and reset the generator and the UV system. Um, on November 5th, I turned the summer beds off for winter um, and opened up the uh, winter bed. And basically, that's all we had. Um, I contacted Toby Smith a couple times to ask him to give me an update. Um, I haven't got that yet. Um, try to get that from the board as soon as possible. I have passed him up at the lake, so I know he is doing some work up there. Um, he's been coming down from uh, Scott's around the corner, so I think he's working on that side of the lake, but I know he is doing some work there. And I think the last time we spoke, he was going to try to be able to by January 1st, so that's what I was kind of hoping he would do. Get it out of the way, you know. Yeah, that's kind of what we planned on. Yeah, it, uh, it's possible. So when I see him, I'll tell him <coughs> there's still a talk that we spoke about that, and we wanted to try to push and get that done. I think that was 15 minutes, was it? I think it was around 15 he had left. Yeah. Okay. Has he turned any bills to the town or no? Nothing. Okay. okay. Um. Gary and I had a talk, I talked to him a little bit here just now again, so about putting a road in at the end of that, where that uh, where their garage is going out there, so it's a short little jump for Dick to get out of those tanks. And he said he'd be more than willing to work with us on that, so we could try to get that done. Um, I figured on the money for the shot rock, just to ease JD's <laughs> concerns there, because I know he is concerned about that, money for the shot rock and maybe the you know, I was thinking of putting shot back in there. Um, and, then, and then maybe some loads of crusher run over top of that, smooth it out, and then uh, have, see if JD and his men would help him with that in the spring. So we try to get that done. Now, I don't know if we have to do anything with the easements or. Um, you know, we should. We should do something with the easement. And I think this is something that should be done if by any chance something happens down there in bad weather and they can't get there. You understand? That would be. Mm -hmm. uh, That's fine. I'll talk to the lawyer to see about getting an uh, easement across there. Maybe yeah. that's something we can work on throughout the winter and then yeah. in the spring, him and I can go at it and yeah. get that road in there. So. Yeah, I just, the timing between you getting it so that Dick can get in there and then. Dick is busy at that time, so it, it creates a bad situation. We need to get in there. Okay. Okay. Yes. Now, anything else? What's the board has a question for me? So the generator didn't, the transfer switch didn't kick when the power went out? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Well, what it does is it still throws an alarm to your house telling that the generator is running and it kicks the UV system out. So I had to go over and reset the UV system, check out the generator, you know, make sure the plant's running all right. And it's, just, it's not a long process, it's just you have to go over every time it does it. So it's nice that it throws an alarm tells me that it, it switches over. Um, since the uh, Joe Rosati put in all of those uh, lightning arresters and things like that, that's, it's been running very, very well. The lightning arresters, that power was kicking out when it got cloudy outside, it was getting so it was really getting temperamental. It's a lot better now than what it was. Okay, so very good. That's all I have. Anybody have anything? And I will be at your budget meeting tomorrow night. Good. Thank you. Seven o'clock here, right? Yep. Thank you, Brad. Yep. Thanks. Thank you, Brad. Okay, I believe we have a <coughs> next thing to public hearing. I'd like to open the public hearing uh, to hear public comments regarding a local law to override the tax levy limit established in the general municipal law 3 C. Uh, it was published in the paper November 7th, the deposit courier, and 
put on the signboard here on November 2nd. Town of Sanford Local Law Number 2 for the year 2012, local law to override the tax levy limit established in general, general municipal law, be it enacted by the Town Board of the Town of Sanford as follows. Section 1, Legislative Intent. It is the intent of this local law to override the limit on the amount of real property taxes that may be levied by the Town of Sanford pursuant to general municipal law 3-C and to allow the Town of Sanford to adopt a budget for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2013 and ending December 31st, 2013 that requires real property tax levy in excess of the tax levy limit as defined by general municipal law 3-C. Section 2. Authority. This local law is adopted pursuant to Subdivision 5 of General Municipal Law 3-C, which expressively authorizes the Town Board to override the tax levy limit by the adoption of a local law approved by vote of at least 60% of the Town Board. Section 3. Tax Levy Limit Override. The Town Board of the Town of Sanford County of Broome is hereby authorized to adopt a budget for the fiscal year 2013 that requires a real property tax levy in excess of the amount otherwise prescribed in General Municipal Law 3-C. Section 4. Severability. If any clause, sentence, paragraph, subdivision, or part of this local law or the application thereof to any person, firm, or corporation, or circumstance shall be adjusted by any court of content, competent jurisdiction to be invalid or unconstitutional, such order or judgment shall not affect, impair, or invalidate the remainder thereof, but shall be confined in its own operation to the clause, sentence, paragraph, subdivision, or part of this local law, or its application to the person, individual, firm, or corporation, or circumstance, directly involved in the controversy in which such judgment or, or order shall be rendered. Section 5, effective date, this local law shall take effect immediately, upon filing with Secretary of State. Thank you. Uh, any more over the written comment? No. Any comments from the <coughs> public? I would like to know why you need to override this 2% cap in the paper of uh, November the 6th, the Binghamton Press, it said that the Bluestone Pipeline is being constructed, and in the town of Windsor, it added $29 million to their tax base. Why does the town of Sanford have to override this tax cap? Well, that's a pretty good question. I don't think we really are going to need it. But we want it in place in case that we have to have it once it formally goes through this uh, state. Um, we don't think we're going to need it, but we've got to have it in place in case we do. Does this get renewed every year or once you get No, your... that's just for this year. Just for one year? Yes. And, and why do you think you might need a extra Well, for example... <clears throat> Workman's comp, for example, went up uh, over 12,000. That's more than 1% increase. Uh, the retirement system went up uh, about 17,000. That's 1.5% increase. So right there is already 2.5% increase. And then health insurance, we put health insurance in there, that brings it up over 3% on just those three things. But there's a formula that is figured in by the state, as near as I understand it, that, uh, for example, when you take the um, uh, retirement system, uh, even though that has gone up 17, over $17,000, uh, to fit into this formula of a 2% cap, you would only need to use a, a, anything over 2% increase kicks out of that formula. And what do you estimate the amount of tax value for the nine miles of the Bluestone Pipeline that they're putting through? I'm not exactly sure on that. 
it, um, I know Windsor, well, that's what you're referring to. Right, it's in the paper. Uh, they got their uh, school tax, I believe, 5%. And I believe the uh, uh, town is dropping it a little more than that. Uh, we, we took in consideration that there would be some revenue from the group home. But it's a little bit, um, how do I want to say it? It's a little bit scary to try to figure those figures in exactly now until we know what those figures are. Because we really don't know what those figures are going to be. Don't you have a contract with Bluestone? With a set amount? No, we don't have a contract. Well, how do they, how do you estimate the value of the pipeline then? That'll have to go through the assess assessor. Is that how that happened in Windsor? Well, our assessor is the same one that's in Windsor. Mm -hmm. That's Becky Odds. Mm -hmm. I talked to her the other day, and she indicated <clears throat> that she's the one that has put the assessment on the laser line. Uh, in order to put an assessment on, you basically have to get comparisons of other type of systems. Uh, she asked for help from the state. <coughs> <coughs> did not receive much help from the state on, on putting that uh, uh, assessment. She went, I believe, out at, around Elmira. Uh, there's a line coming out of Pennsylvania that, that went into that district there. And, and it was a uh, pumping station. She got some information there. There were two sources she got. I, I'm not sure, but I I'm not even sure she put the assessment high enough on the laser. Uh, that's going to take some. That's going to take some study. But but isn't that a silly way to do business with a big company, not knowing what you're going to be getting? So, see, the town don't enter into an agreement with the with the pipeline as far as assess valuation. You mean it goes to the individual property owner? No, no. When they get through, they will have an assessment on the pipeline. It will be so much per foot. There will be an assessment put on the uh, uh, compressor station. For example, the Millennium Line, when it went through, I think that was like $270 per foot. Uh, so. <laughs> to me, I think the assessor can use some of that information. She did not mention that to me the other day, but I think that is something that can be used as a comparison. Now, that Millennium Line, when that went in, that went in a, on a pilot program where they paid a percentage for five years, like 25%. Then they paid 50% for the next five, and then they're going to pay 100% after 15 years. Which that is something the town did not agree with. But that went through the IDA at the county. And um, we were forced to take that, that as pilot program. But I think that can be used to try to set up an assessment. I, I guess it's kind of... It's kind of dangerous for the town to try to put an, an estimate on to something like that that is, uh, we're not exactly sure what we'd be getting. But then doesn't the town stand a risk of being the one on the short end of that assessment to the benefit of the pipeline companies? I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. Well, if. For instance, with this story about Windsor with the $29 million assessment. Yeah. If that's low, that means the town of Windsor is losing out when they would be getting more money if they had an accurately based assessment. If, if, they, if they set the assessment too low, it would be hurting... The town of Windsor. It would be hurting the town of Windsor. And to see there's... There's not, there's not too many 
things that have gone on at this point where you can, in order to get an assessment, you've got to get some basis. And well, then how could she do an assessment if she doesn't have a basis? Excuse me on that? How could, how could Ms. Ottens make an assessment if she doesn't have all the facts to base her assessment on? Well, that's where I said that you know, she asked for help from the state, but she did not receive that help from the state. And she ended up uh, getting some help from uh, Elmire area. There's a gentleman over there that was familiar with some of this area. She worked, she had to get as much information as she could. But every time a pipeline, now for us, when we, when we set this up, we'll have laser for a comparison. You see what I mean? Every time there's another one that's that put in operation, <coughs> you get more information. There'll be more base to get that information. And you should be able to get it more correct each time that happens. But as far as the town at this point, trying to figure into a budget, an uh, exact estimate of what that's going to be, we couldn't do that. It's kind of, tr it's kind of dangerous to put in a budget on an estimate that you're not sure you're going to get. We did look at that. But just between you and I, I tell you what, kind of what we did. Mm -hmm. uh, we used a little more fund balance than we generally do to make some of that adjustment, figuring that we're going to get more next year from the uh, Bluestone pipeline. Uh, but as far as getting an exact figure, we don't have that. And it's too risky to try to put in a figure that you might not get. The county did that a couple times on, on leases, and they never got the lease. Isn't the millennium assessed? So the line has already gone through here? Oh, yeah. Who did the assessment on that? The state. I think they did that. Um, that's where I said, and we didn't. Uh, the town didn't realize any uh, revenue from that. Yeah, that's where I said there's a pilot program. The town had no control over that pilot program at all. That was went through the IDA at the county, mm -hmm. and if I remember right, that is figured at two hundred seventy dollars per foot on the pipeline, but. We don't have a compressor station and, and that type of thing, so the only the only information that I would have from that would be per foot. Plus the fact that you got to take into consideration too. That's a 30-inch line. Mm -hmm. uh, Bluestone, I believe, is going to be a 20-inch line. That's what it said in the paper. And um, you also got to take into consideration the width of the easement. So. You got to come out with different kind of calculations there, and as a board right here, we can't do that. I mean, we can when it comes time to to assess that. Uh, I'm, I'm sure the board's going to get involved in it. So, is is this Bluestone pipeline going to run basically in the same air, the same direction and spacing <coughs> as the uh, Millennium pipeline? Or is no. it going in different areas? Uh, that comes out of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it starts down in Pennsylvania, it comes up through, and it comes into town of Sanford, and it goes right to the Millennium Line. And that's where the uh, pumping station is going to be. That's going to be, well, it's uh, up on the Bazzelli Road. It's uh, right next to the uh, town of Windsor Line. And they purchased, uh, I believe, over 100 acres. So <clears throat> that line is running north and south, where the Millennium is running crossways, east and west. East and west. And the Blue Stone is, a, is still considered a gathering line, and the Millennium is a uh, commercial line. It, uh, <clears throat> and so there would be a, 
a different value per foot. And I can't tell you what that difference would be. But there is another line that they're talking about, and Bob, you've heard that, the Constitution line. That, I'm not too sure, was hit in your land. Have you had any? Nothing. Nothing as far as anything definite. Well, I know they've been sending information out to landowners. Just printed flyers. Okay, you've received those, have you? I've received two or three, yeah. Okay, it, um, now that's going to be a 30 inch line. And that's a transmission line, and that's coming out of Pennsylvania, and that's going to be going up to uh, Schoharie, up by Albany. And that's that. Um, that's a lot different, mm -hmm. and it's going to. I guess I would suggest to you to get a hold of uh, Jim Wharton and talk to him and. Um, I think everybody that's on that line should try to get organized somehow to uh, uh, deal with that. That uh, is going to be a federal line where Bluestone is, is, is controlled under the state regulations. And the federal line is going to have uh, eminent domain. Um, they're going to be harder to deal with. Now we have maps out here that uh, the clerk has that shows there's uh, two sets of maps that um, I guess the, the one that I believe you're on is alternate route. They call it B to begin with, but I think now they call it the alternate route. And um, I would suggest that you would get involved in that because you sure don't want them to have the capability of putting him in a domain on it. And the reason why I'm telling you to get in touch with them because I believe they're going to organize and set up an LLC and do the same thing that they did over on the laser line because uh, the same company is going to build that line, which would be Cabot Oil and uh, Williams. Okay. They're the ones that have bought that over there. They're familiar with what what the uh, uh, lease agreement was on that over there, and it was a very attractive lease agreement that they got over there. And I don't think that the Constitution is going to offer that kind of over here. So if people get organized, and they should they should be treated. Better. Do you have a list of the proposed? properties that they intend to? The map will show that. The map will show that? Yeah. I'm very bad at reading maps, do we? I'm very bad at reading maps. Oh, it's an aerial oh, photograph of right. everybody's name. And oh, uh, okay. it, will, it will show as it comes up through, and it will show the names right on. Okay. That where they go across. That, um, <clears throat> and just, uh, they're not going to go where the, like Bluestone tries to go up boundary lines. They're just going to go right straight through. The shortest way. And they're going close to buildings and they're, it's going to be, it's going to be different than the Bluestone. She can register on the FERC website. We went to the Constitution Pipeline meeting in Oneana about 10 okay. days ago. And we have a lot of information brought back Good. from that, so Good. Gail and I could probably talk to you about it later. Yeah. Yeah. And the FERC website, then you would get the emails and everything you know what Okay, time. because I can get it. Well, I don't have to. I can give my son's email. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're but that is definitely for only one year, a 2% bypass. That's what this agreement right here is, yes. Yeah. And if I understand it right, if you go over this year, the amount that you go over, you've got to make it up next year. It's, uh, but it's very complicated. It, okay. Uh, 
I think tomorrow night we'll know better on how we stand. It, uh, Summer is working that through the uh, program with the state. She's going to do that tomorrow. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. All persons desire to be heard, having been heard, this public hearing is closed. <coughs> J.D., how are we making out with those all those signs that they're still on? There must be the line ball on that, aren't we? Uh, I still, I talked to the state police there the other day. Nothing at this time. I can't catch them. Is that what happened at the corner of Lewis, Shaver, North Hamburg Road? Uh, it looks like somebody hit it with a vehicle. It was laid down. I talked to the county and to their it was as of last Wednesday, I spoke with uh, Dick Marks, and to his assumption, his guys come out and pick that sign up and take it back to the shop to repair it. I was just hoping that maybe they tried to pull one up and take the bumper off or something. I see it was still... Yeah, it was bent over. It looks like maybe a car might come down and hit it and bend it over. But it's possible, you know, they could have hooked something on it and tried to bend it over and pull it up out there. It's possible. You know, we've had a couple, for instance, Johnson Road, the guys will tell you, looks like they did put something on it a chain or something, tried to bend it over, they just couldn't get out of the ground, so they took a piece of aluminum and snapped right off the top. Truck running that over. The one you're talking about? Check the trailer on that over. You see the tire tracks. 
Yeah. 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 Oh, when you guys are doing fishing up there, so you just ran over and made the turn? Shit. Yep. <laughs> well, I guess you gotta go over there. <laughs> yeah, we've had a couple where they've actually done them over and broke the stop check off. Well, if you look on the second page, you bought the 2500 we've already spent $6,169. It um, seems like there's places that you're putting signs up and they're being stolen within a week or two, I think. Uh, yep, we've had that case, uh, for instance, on, it was the <coughs> Wheeler Schoolhouse Road up there off Lumber. We've had that, we put it up one week, the following week was completely gone and everything. Not kind of what this last week put up, it's stayed so far. And when we took the highway tour there, I showed you guys out there on Buchanan Road, where that one was completely missing. That kind of order, so this rates could change by the end of the year, just so, out of our hands. I had a concerned resident call. Uh, you know, we got to keep them there for some reason. The public mm -hmm. safety, fire, ambulance, sheriff. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to know where they got to go. If there's ever an emergency, you got to commit. Public health. <coughs> I make a motion to accept this chief of the report from the 930. I'll no second that motion. Oh, there. Aye. Aye. Hold. Here it is. Thank you. Highway. It's not too long. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. All right, uh, we take our highway tour there last week. And uh, there's a few things we walked around the shop, I explained to you guys. Uh, we looked at the truck with the frame issue. So, first thing I want to go over with you guys is uh, the fuel tanks on the other side. I explained to you guys we should have a roof over there to keep the weather off them, keep the water out of the thing. We need to get a place out there for a fire extinguisher. Um, and what I've done is I went ahead to uh, Wheeler's Collision here in Deposit, and I also went to SNS Service here in Deposit. And I uh, looked at those Eagle carports that they have up here. Uh, I have a brochure for you guys. I got a couple different price quotes from them for you guys also. Um, I'd like to go with a, basically it's going to be 18 feet wide, 20 feet, 21 feet in length, uh, 10 foot high on sides. And the color prices that come in for us would be installed at our site. All the uh, prevaliation, so on and so forth, would be included. They explained to me with their insurances. From uh, Wheeler's Collision, they come in at $1,435 for this to be installed. Uh, then I went over to SNS, and they come in with a quote of $1,515 for the same exact thing. I was kind of concerned, you know, that they thought they were the same dealer, but they guess apparently they may not be, or whatever. So. I got quotes from both just to make sure, and uh, like I said, it's like $80 difference from one place to another. I didn't know what you guys' feeling on that was, but I kind of feel that we probably ought to have something to protect our tanks. It's a big investment over there to keep the weather off those pumps. Um, put a set of steps out in front of those tanks out there so somebody doesn't get hurt. They were just using ladders before. I don't, I don't think there's any choice. We something we have to do. I think we should have one, personally, something to protect us. So, that's something I'd uh, like to ask for you guys to take out of our garage expense. Uh, you guys don't mind. This is installed, right? This is installed yeah. price at our location. We have to have the spot level, which you guys all know we have body transit in the past uh, for assault and damage buildings, so we can use that to make sure uh, we have a level spot for them to set that up. Is that going to look like this one right here? Uh, it's going to look uh, like the other set of others, like around it. <coughs> That's where you said you're going to stick them up two feet on either side. Yeah. This one? Yeah, it's going to be like that one. It's like the... Uh, like you showed us. Yeah. If you want to go with more of a peak roof, if you look at that prices right here, I can show you it goes up as you go through. It's like $100 more just for the framing, for the peak roof style. Um, and then you've got to add more for the length of the legs here, but I'll kind of set the results. Is there any guarantee on it? Snow load? Yeah. Uh, yep, it's, the snow load is right there on there. 
There's this lighter duty one, there's a heavy duty, it should say right there between columns. You see that? It's about snow and gold. Mm -hmm. There should say something about snow load on that paper right there. <coughs> I think it was 65 pounds, uh, I read in there. One was a 45 and one was a 65 pound. Which one do you use? Yeah, yeah. uh, was the one we went with would be the 65 pound. December 20th of this year, as you guys all know. Um, we ran into some paperwork issues with uh, the contractor and also our engineer, so we had things worked out there and we're waiting on the building. So, as soon as that comes in, we're going to start that. While you're on that, it, um, uh, I haven't got it here. I'll have to go back to we got to pick out a color. I think I thought you already had a color picked out. Yeah, that was all done. It, um, but I got to call it. Uh, 
we got to pick out a color. Yeah, it was supposed so, to be. I haven't got that chart right here. Left. We'll go back over that later. Yeah, but that was picked out a long time ago. Yeah. Some kind of a light brown, I think it was. Yeah, it was like a off gray. Off gray? Yeah. yeah. Uh, another thing while we're back to the garage here, uh, when we went through the highway tour, I showed you guys the entrance doors there. Uh, pretty poor shape, rusted. We got plywood on one, there's padlocks on these doors. We got a million dollar facility up there. We're going to build that thing today, some million dollars at least. And these doors we have, we're losing the heat every single day. You guys know what fuel's doing. Uh, <coughs> there's, like I said, money in this account right now. I think we ought to be put it to good use. Uh, a couple things every year if we can update. <coughs> a few doors this year. You know, little things like this, and we're going in the right direction and slowly just improving our facility over there. I've been working with a couple local contractors. I did have one quote come in this morning uh, from Gary Davey. I also have one out there from Joe Cameron. And he's supposed to get back to me here in another day or so with a quote. Um, I don't know what you guys' feelings on something like that, but I feel that we ought to... Uh, the garage doors. Not the overhead doors, but those 36 so inch walk doors. Walk doors. Yeah. Yeah, they're bad. Yeah. <coughs> Um, like I said, I feel it's something we need to do, you know, to start conserving the energy, you know, the price of fuel is going, if we can cut back a little bit, keep the building, another step forward. Do you have any idea what you're for? Yeah, I have an idea what they're going to run us, but, you know, I really don't, I don't feel it would be fair if I open this up to everybody without the other contractor putting his price out there. Right, you know what I mean? Right. Because if I come out with a price today, the other guy is going to say, well, I'm going to beat him up by $500 and just knock this price off. I don't feel scared of this guy. Yeah. Right. Steel doors, steel commercial? Well, this gentleman, Gary Davies, that I received, he gave me two different quotes. Uh, one would be on a commercial steel door with glass input, and he also gave me a residential grade steel insulated door with the glass. So he gave me two different prices. I don't want to give up the prices today because right. I don't feel it's fair to Mr. King. Right. Good. Personal yes. What do you feel fair to Gary? These doors swing in or swing out? Right now, there's two that swing in and two that swing out. I feel they should be swinging out. I feel they should swing out. He holds me to swing out. Um, I don't know what you guys' feeling is. Do you feel that I should bring this back to the next month? I'd like to have this done by then. Or do you feel that we ought to call a special meeting or something after I get these quotes? I feel personally that we're going to have plenty of money in the budget because it's not like a huge, huge expense. I'm pretty sure we have some money. Yeah, we're going to have the money for it. Yeah. I think we could do this with a couple of dollars for everybody. Right. Yeah. So when I get the other price, we'll do a telephone call. I'll call all you guys and explain to you what the prices are and you can let me know if you don't mind. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah. Okay, uh, next thing. Right now, I'm working with Paz Construction Company, which is uh, representing basically the Bluestone Pipeline. A few of the roads right now is getting a little bit of damage due to heavy truck traffic. Um, and I spoke to Karen Weaver with Bluestone, and she doesn't feel that the pipeline would do the best job at, with the fixing our roads in regards to off the specs in New York State because they're a huge contractor, this third largest pipe installer in the world, the largest in the United States. She feels that we ought to use a local company, which I do too, which is out of Bangkok to New York. Um, with regards, they give all the work to these companies here. And then they sell out small branches, for instance, so Gorek, Shaper Enterprises, our local people here, because they have like one big vendor to use. Because they have a lot of people through the state of New York. So basically, she's working with Foz, I'm working with Foz to get somewhat of a price worked up for some of this road damage right now. We're going to do some temporary fixes to the springtime, and then we're going to move forward. As you all know, I explained to you guys about pipes being, being installed, a few roads up through there. This fast construction can do it. Yeah, you know, this pipeline company. They really don't know how to do that person. You know, I went there and actually the baby said, 
I can't do it with the babysitter. So, I'm going to give that up. Okay. Uh, the new computer has been installed for the deputy in the office. Uh, Hurricane Sandy came through. Uh, thank God. We fared pretty well here. We had quite a few trees down. We lost a piece of guide rail over Loomis. We had probably two and a half days worth to clean up there for the whole thing, which is not bad at all. Guys were excellent. They were there on standby all the time for us. Did a very good job on that. Uh, counting, as you do we know, we had a few meetings over the phone with them, conference calls. They were good, they already be on standby. Anything like that, we said they were good for us. Okay, the last thing I have here is uh, we're going to need a little time at the end of the meeting, whether we do it now or later for the executive meeting to discuss litigation strategies. So we can do that now or we can do one executive I, session. I guess what I'd like to do is on through and do that at the end of the meeting. Yep. And, uh, I think it would work better. Yep. That's fine. Okay, thank you. And then, uh, I, th I think in the future, I would like to change our agenda just a little bit. Uh, after grad, I'd like to have the dog board. No, I, I keep forgetting the dog man. <laughs> I'd like to have it set up so that then he doesn't have to set to every meeting all the way through. And I'd like to ask him to, at this point, uh, this month, not a whole lot has gotten done. I had some personal issues go on. Uh, most of the month was tied up to a, a case, an ongoing case that I got going. Uh, it was on Big Hollow Road. I'm going to go back to court on that December 7th. There's a lot of money that's tied up into that right now. And as far as I know from the judge, that this person is going to be responsible for all that money. So there's going to be quite a few bills, high dollar bills that are going to be coming in. So he's going to be responsible for that. And the town's not going to, but for right now, we're all going to come into the town's name and that will all get taken care of when we go to court. Uh, I started going through the dog list. Uh, I didn't get to it until the end of the month. We started making some phone calls to the people that have been really behind them, licensing their dogs. Hasn't been very beautiful. People haven't been very happy about it. Uh, it's just something that's got to be done. Uh, I talked with Dewey before the meeting, and I'm going to be changing my home phone number to a private number so the public doesn't have my home phone number. I've had some serious issues going on, and I'm just going to have my cell phone for the, the public use. And that's about it. Do you have plenty of service at your residence anyways? Okay. Do you get calls day and night? Yeah. Uh, I've gotten some really vulgar calls and I've had yeah. young children at home. No. And they've answered the phone and gotten the front of it. So I don't I can't want to continue doing that. Really. I think that's the thing that uh, the children are going through some phone calls that are that they shouldn't have to be right. and uh, that's the biggest reason why you want to change yeah I mean I thought in the beginning well people would be fairly decent but it doesn't seem so and, and, and with this case I've got going on this this is one of the big things and this this person is a, a really bad guy and some serious stuff is going on and the sheriff's involved in it. So you'd give up your home phone and just get another number and then use your cell phone? Yeah, the, the public system. could the public people could call my cell phone, which eighty percent of people do anyways, because when I'm at work that's the only number to get a hold of me on. But you could change your phone number at home. Yeah, I'm Good. just gonna change the number and then keep it a private number. Good. Now, uh, for the public part, so the people that don't know you, for instance, do you have any like uh, contacts in the paper or any yeah, new business it, cards? It, you... I mean, it was in the paper. It was posted in the paper for a couple of weeks. I mean, we could put it back in again. Mm -hmm. 
goods we use yeah. and should I use a primary if you use the cell phone for the public? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> have a uh, <clears throat> community arts and arts education grant program with uh, it's, uh, I guess I'd like to pass this around. I don't know whether it's something that uh, the town has never been involved in as far as I know. But, uh, anybody thinks there is something that uh, the town possibly be interested in what it would be.
Yeah. Says so we can call them and see if we call them. Yeah. They thought while well, you were having your sandwich at lunch, you could check on that one. <laughs> You know, this is a very detailed grant application, which I can't believe because it's only at five thousand dollars for each. Yeah. I can't believe it's a very complicated grant application, but I won't go until I look at it. Okay. So we got homework. <laughs> I thought we should look into this. It, uh, it does. Um, I guess I really don't know how to say it, but uh, I think you're asking for support, so to speak. But the communication with the uh, financial colleagues, I think that's good. It, uh, whether they put it in uh, the town of Sanford or not, it, uh, there is a possibility of these. Grants, which look like it could be multiple grants, that, um, <coughs> and it's uh, well, it's like education programs, youth and senior service, economic development, emergency first response support, and so I think that there's a possibility here of. <coughs> Qualifying for quite a few things. I'd like to pass this around. I'll send this one this way, so we end up with you. <laughs> yeah. you, you have the case of the scheme that you're in here, Allison. Allison, or Summer does. Mm -hmm. That's probably you know quite a bit of paperwork. I'm sure. I do have a contact that is a great writer. I'd like to be able to just send that to her to get her opinion on how we should proceed. I think I think this one. I, I didn't think you had to do this one. Well, you don't have any more, right? Because I'm you know. uh, not this one. <laughs> <laughs> but that's as far as I would go with that. Really, is I'd like to please wait for her feedback. I know her well. She's done a lot of great writing for village. I, I guess on that one, what I'm really looking for is. Uh, His guidance from the board uh, pursuing that to me it uh, um, the board has got to stay as neutral as they can on all these things but at the same time uh, whether we are not going to make a decision in any way that that pipeline will shoot but in the meantime if it's possible to get let's say 25,000 for let's say the fire department in the emergency um, and if we qualify for it and the uh, pipeline goes through Windsor, good. Mm -hmm. But I think we should be looking into the <coughs> possibility of getting what what could be done. If, uh, We've never had a grant before, have we? No. As far no. as under the um, payroll of the town. No. I tried to work something out with the young lady that worked with the village. And she indicated that she had more than she could handle. She did. That's who I meant about. You meant about her. Mm -hmm. I thought she was excellent. She's very knowledgeable. And she'll give you some feedback on this, at least. Mm -hmm. Give you a direction to go with. But Maybe. I mean, there's many consulting firms. I want some feedback from her before I even propose looking at any other grant managers or anything like that. I want to see what she has to say. Mm -hmm. but she's, She's working for a very large outfit now that does great writing. Thank you. And uh, so she's been doing this for many years and I'd like to get her feedback on it. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about even the Constitution or did you want Summer to look into that? I just want to be able to scan the email to see Excellent. So I didn't put 
portion of that when you ask for it yourself? Well, I'm going to pass it right out to Sunday. I had an email and say send this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Very good. Okay, that kind of does it for me. It's, uh, I guess uh, we can go into an executive session now. Well, we're going to have to come back. Can you take the bills and the bills? Can you take the bills, Yeah. <coughs> We need to uh, make a motion for one of the second session. Good night. Good night. Good night. It, uh, now, how was it? The way you said it there? We need to go to the executive discussion to uh, discuss some litigation strategies. Motion to go to executive session. All in favor? Aye. Carried.